the way that we've been doing scientific discovery and you know drug discovery or other areas um, has completely changed and is going to change even more in the future because we're now able to run large scale experiments and the amount of data we're collecting, especially collectively with many labs and organizations, is just too big for human brains to uh, uh, to deal with. And so we need machines to help us um, make sense of that data and um, in particular, do two things. There are two things that are important in the, the use of machine learning in scientific discovery. One is coming up with scientific hypotheses, and the other is coming up with experiments, experimental designs, like right? what, what should we try next experimentally? Or where do we put our computational resources? Sometimes it's it's also similar kind of discussion. And so it's it's good to see how that fits in the bigger picture of scientific discovery. We accumulate experimental data, uh, we analyze it, we try to model it. Maybe uh, from that uh, kind of unsupervised analysis of the data, we then generate explanatory hypotheses, you know, about how this could work. And here the emphasis is hypotheses plural because there may be. Uh, you know, multiple interpretations of the data. And in general, there will be, um, we have to take into account the uncertainty about the right explanation for that data to drive the next step, which is to design, you know, experiments for the next round. And of course, do the experiments accumulate data, you know, it goes like this. Um, the, um, the thing that really drives um, a lot of the, insights and inspiration for methods that my group has been working on is the assumption that this exercise of finding good hypotheses or good candidates for experiments is fundamentally difficult that we're and it's difficult because we're looking for a few needles in a haystack in other words the space of potential uh, hypotheses to explain data or the space of potential candidates that we could experiment with that could be, you know, interesting is huge, is exponentially large. And only a very, very tiny fraction of these are good in some sense. Um, so why is this important? It's important if you think of it geometrically, right? So if you throw darts, like you basically run, try things randomly, there's no chance you're going to find something good. Um, and one of the main messages here is we can use machine learning, in particular what's called amortized inference, in order to help decide where to throw darts, whether it's in the space of uh, hypotheses or the space of uh, candidate um, for experiments. Um, we're going to take advantage of the ability of machine learning to generalize in order to make good guesses, which otherwise would be, as I said, like uh, impossible. Uh, so we may have some clues, we may have some cases where we have found some good things, right? And that's data that allows to generalize to make guesses about where there might be other good things or even better things, right? So that's that's the principle that we're going to try to exploit. Um, and in general, uh, this search especially uh, like in, in, in context here of uh, searching for molecules, um, that search isn't just about like which candidate is better in the sense of like better affinity or something like this. Usually it's much, we may have uh, many different properties we care about. I'll come back to that. But also at a more abstract level, as I said, we want a diversity of candidates. Um, so I'll come back a lot on that, but uh, uh, fundamentally, the reason we want diversity is that the way we are evaluating those candidates is going to be imperfect. And so we can't put all our eggs in the same basket. I'll, I'll come back to that. And then the other thing we care about is novelty in the sense that we already have some candidates and we don't want to just repeat the same thing. We want to explore far from the things we know, ideally, right? So, so that aspect of novelty is important because... Uh, Local search, like little tweaks, is much easier. And of course, we, we we should do that. But what is hard and that you know we should give value to is discovering things that are good and far very different in nature from the things we already know. Okay. Um, 
Another concept that's very important when you think about this exploration is the concept of active learning. So remember we have this loop where we can do experiment and then like modeling and proposing new experiments. Um, how do we choose those experiments? Isn't just about which ones are, you know, expected to be better according to some metric. Um, we should take into account the fact that there is a loop that we're going to be continuing that over and over multiple times. And so the idea of active learning is uh, because we know we're going to do more experiments, we can afford to be exploratory, to seek information, for example, about regions of space where we don't have enough information and there could be something good. Remember, we, we're looking for this needle in the haystack. Uh, 